Today's thought of the day, episode 24, is about a book titled Every Nation for Itself by Ayn Bremer that analyzes the current state of global affairs where no single country or group of countries has the power and willingness to provide global leadership and public goods. Traditional superpower like the United States face internal challenges and reduced capacity to exert influence on the international stage. The book argues that we live in a G0 world where the traditional powers, the US, Europe, and Japan are in decline. The emerging powers, China, India, Brazil, etc., are not ready or interested to take their place. And the multilateral institutions like UN, the IMF, the World Trade Organization, etc., are ineffective and outdated. The book explores the causes and consequences of this leadership vacuum and how it affects various issues such as security, trade, climate change, cyber warfare, and human rights. The book also identifies the potential winners and losers in a G0 world and offers some scenarios and strategies for navigating the uncertainty and volatility of the new global order. Here are some of the main points from the book. The G0 world is a result of the shift from a unipolar world dominated by the US after the Cold War to a multipolar world with many competing actors and interests. The US is no longer able or willing to act as the global policeman or lender of the last resort. US is facing enormous debt crisis and it has to borrow $4 billion every day to run the country. So with such a huge debt crisis at home, US is not in any form or shape to play a leadership role in the world like before. Two, interdependence of US and China is such that current China, currently China is the US's, US's client state while the China at the same time is the biggest creditor to US. According to author, Portugal's per capita income is still three times bigger than China's per capita income today. That is the reason China at present is busy alleviating the standard of living of its 1.34 billion population. It is not interested to take up the responsibility of global leadership role. Other powers are either too weak, too divided, or too focused on their own internal issues to fill the gap. The G0 world is characterized by a lack of global governance and cooperation, as well as by increased regionalization and fragmentation. In the absence of a dominant global leader, regional powers gain influence and pursue their interests more assertively. This can lead to increased competition and tension in various regions around the world. Countries tend to form ad hoc coalitions based on specific issues or interest rather than on shared values or principles. Regional blocks emerges as alternative sources of uh, influence and stability, such as the EU, ASEAN, BRICS, and GCC. The G0 world creates many challenges and risks for both developed and developing countries. The author identifies countries and entities that may benefit from the G0 world and those that might struggle. Nations with strong domestic foundations and adaptability may thrive, while others face economic and political uncertainties. 
For example, it makes it harder to deal with transnational threats like terrorism, nuclear proliferation, pandemics, or cyber attacks. It also undermines the global trade system and creates prote protectionist pressures and currency wars. In a G0 world, countries may adapt more protectionist policies and international trade and investment flows may be influenced by regional dynamics rather than global agreements. It also exacerbates the effects of climate change and resource scarce, scarcity and threatens human rights and democracy. The G0 world also offers some opportunities and benefits for some countries and actors. For example, it allows some countries to pursue their own interests and agendas without interference or constraints from others. Countries that have been experiencing economic growth and increasing geopolitical influence regionally may see an opportunity to expand their global role. Traditional global powers focused on their internal issues are unable to provide strong leadership. Rising regional powers might step in to fill the void and assert themselves on the global stage. Some emerging economies, particularly those with large population and growing economies, may seize the chance to enhance their economic par partnership and attract foreign investment. They might offer alternative trade and investment opportunities, presenting themselves as viable alternatives to traditional economic powerhouse. It also creates space for innovation and entrepreneurship in various sectors and regional regions. Countries with advanced technological capabilities could see opportunities to drive innovation and technological advancement in a G0 world. As technological progress becomes increasingly vital to economic and strategic advantages, tech savvy nations may have a chance to lead in various sectors and potentially influence global standards. In the absence of a dominant global power or coalition, regional alliances and blocs may strengthen their cooperation and collaboration. They could work together to address regional challenges, promote trade and increase their collective bargaining power in the global arena. Recent examples of such regional influence is a peace treaty signed between Saudi Arabia and Iran, brokered by China. It also empowers non-state actors such as NGOs, corporations, media outlets, influential individuals, or social movements to play a bigger role in shaping the events. According to author, the countries with specialized expertise or resources in specific fields such as renewable energy, cybersecurity, or artificial intelligence might find opportunities to become key players in those domains. They could become sought after partners for countries seeking to address critical global challenges. Overall, the opportunities and challenges presented by a G0 world will vary depending on each country's unique strategy, each country's unique strengths, capabilities, and strategic positioning, adaptability, foresight, and diplomatic skill will essential for countries lies on the changing geopolitical landscape and navigate the complexities of international relations in this scenario.